Silver and gold, get ready for stagflation. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Oh, precious metals. What can I say? <laughs> We're getting slapped around, aren't we? But you know, gold, which I have out right here, my, my Yankee Cannon, I, I wanted to take a look at it again and remind myself why I am stacking. Gold, gold's down about what, 10% since it's high? Back in March 8th, before all this craziness. Oh, man. But silver? Oh, it's getting abused. Oh, it's off 34% from its high back on February 24th. What? All right. Now, I've spoken about why I think silver is getting clobbered uh, versus a moderate drop in gold. You can check it out right up there. But but I really think that things are going to shift hard. First, for gold. And then, with silver. As it confirms the move that gold, I think, is going to make. I am confident that it will blow right past gold with its percentage increase. Similar, again, to what it did after the financial crisis of 08 and during the Great Recession, or well, at least all the way up to 2011. Um, that's, <laughs> that's when the Fed suckered everybody into thinking they had, you know, solved the problem, you know, landed the plane. They didn't solve finding their way out of a freaking paper bag. Now, I still believe that we could get this uh, 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 sickness that we're dealing with, okay, under control. Again, I, I can't say the name. YouTube's going to demonetize me like it did on my last video, but whatever. You know what I'm talking about. But I do think we could be dealing with this illness for months. I mean, many, many months. Okay, I don't, I don't want to... I don't want to sensationalize this uh, health crisis, but I don't want to minimize it either. So, so just suppose the number of, of cases uh, continues to increase at its current rate. I've been watching this very carefully. It's roughly quadrupling uh, in, in the United States every week. And if that continues, it's possible that by the end of March, we could have hundreds of thousands of people dealing with this. And that is why you and I have to be so diligent in our social distancing, no matter how painful that is. What are we facing in 2020? Well, I'm going to sum it up in one word. Stagflation. All right, Yankee. Yeah, okay. What, what, what's stagflation? Well, <laughs> I'm going to go all retro on you guys and gals, okay? We're going back to the 1970s. We're talking the days of uh, wide ties and, and paisley shirts, hilarious tuxedos, bell bottoms, disco, streaking, <laughs> women's liberation movement, Watergate, and stagflation. Guys, it was a terrible time of both recession and inflation. Okay, gas lines at the at the pump, price fixing, the misery index. I mean, if you don't know what this is, Google it. Okay, if you went through it, you know what I'm talking about. And again, if you you didn't, you millennials out there, you need to learn about stagflation. Even you know, even the Gen Xers. Okay, I'm a Gen Xer, uh, on the older side. <laughs> I was a kid during that time. I do remember it a little bit, but. I, I wasn't that interested, just like little stacks. I mean, you know, I, I wanted to play, right? Um, but it was a horrible time economically. You see, normally when you go through a recession or even a depression, for that matter, you at least get some relief from rising consumer prices. I mean, that's what happened during the Great Depression, okay? Food was less expensive, basic supplies were cheaper. Yeah, you might lose your job, but you can 
maybe make ends meet for a while with lower costs and savings. But stagflation? Oh, folks, that is a toxic mixture of recession and inflation. Businesses fail, you lose your job, and prices go up. <laughs> See, the 1970s were were horrible. It was a, it was a nightmare for many, but we were predominantly savers. We were manufacturers. And at least at the very start of the decade, <laughs> we had this stuff backing our our money. Well, till 1971, but it was holding our nation's debt down, all right? In fact, the debt to GDP level the, 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 through the whole decade of the 70s was way down. We're talking low 30s, folks. Now, oh my word, <laughs> we're not savers. <laughs> we're we're debt-ridden slaves from the, the, the government to, the, to, to our corporations to individuals across the board. We don't make anything anymore. And, and our currency? <laughs> well, it's backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government, a.k.a. Jack Squat. And the GDP, you know, the debt-to-GDP ratio, what is it, 106 now? It's, it's terrible. So, stagflation, that is the real danger here, folks. And, and it's hardly ever mentioned in the financial media, we're printing like madmen now, okay? We are inflating our currency just because the CPI isn't reflecting it. Just because we've, you know, pushed inflation into the financial markets. Wait until it comes flooding out. What, what is inflating Wall Street is going to inflate Main Street. The stock market inflation will become the supermarket inflation really soon. And here in, in the banks, oh my word. Again, I, I've mentioned this before. I've worked at a bank before. I, it, <laughs> they don't even stress test stagflation. It's not part of the testing for our, our banking and financial system at all. They, they don't even consider it as a possibility. You know that prices have gone up. You know that shrinkflation is a real thing. These are indicators, folks. We know inflation is there, ready to pounce. So during this uh, crisis, what is the response going to be? What are we going to see with gold and silver? Well, first, first let's talk about what the economic uh, response will be by <laughs> the government and the Fed. So we've already seen the first wave. We did. Governments announcing bailouts. Well, we already saw the Fed cutting rates to zero. I saw that coming, predicted it, and it happened. A little faster than I thought it was going to happen, but it happened. But we're going to see the next wave. See, as, as stagflation just you know, starts to rear its head, there's going to be a growing public outcry for the government to do something, do something more, anything. Give me a bailout. I need a bailout. They're going to just demand it, okay? People are, are going to form and join uh, PACs or political action committees. They're going to lobby that more needs to be done by our government for the good of the people. And it's, and it's happening. We're seeing it. Governments and central banks are going to roll out new solutions. They're going to do this in concert with each other and globally. They, in fact, the, some of the uh, Fed changes that were announced were announced as a sweeping change globally across all central banks or all major central banks. So what you're going to see, I believe, is wage and price controls. They had price controls back in the 70s. And I think we're going to see those announced again when things get really out of control. I think you're going to see uh, other controls like credit being controlled. I think you might see landlord controls. Oh, 
Wait a minute. Yeah, that's already started up in my state. That one I had thought about as a possible uh, new solution, and boom, there it is. You can't do a lot of things as a landlord now during this crisis. How about restrictions on changing jobs? What? Yankee, you nuts? I can actually see that. Um, how about controls on withdrawing your money from your bank account? I've talked a lot about that in the past. Be the bank, get your money out. Restrictions on the use of cash. I mean, you know, can't you see the argument there, right? We have to protect against, uh, you know, tax evasion, right? Hmm. How about direct purchases of company stock by the Fed? That seems rather far-fetched, but they have actually contemplated that. What about nationalization? Uh, that's what the French minister actually said right here. You can see they're considering the possibility of nationalizing companies. Now, that's France, okay? <laughs> I used to work for a French company. I get it. They, they have no qualms about nationalization. But what about here in the United States? Mm -hmm. I can see that happening too in reaction to stagflation. What about negative interest rates? That is <laughs> considered absolutely bonkers, all right? And, and people have said, no way will that happen, Yankee. Uh-uh, no. Now, in a sense, we already do have negative real uh, interest rates. I mean, just think about what you get at the bank and what inflation is. It's negative. But even worse than that, I do believe at some point we could see it cost you to leave your money in the bank. Negative interest rates, definitely a possibility, as well as, you know, bank holidays. What about martial law? So, guys, anything is possible when stagflation hits. But none of these are solutions, okay? They don't address the root cause. This is just state intervention in the economy. It, it's actually socialism, folks. Blatant socialism. It's like the government and, and central banks are, are a bunch of pyromaniacs who have, who have lit the fiscal and monetary wildfire on our economy through debt and funny money. And now they're arriving at the uh, raging flames and they're here to save the day for us. But make no mistake, fellow stackers and, and preppers and, and Americans, they will force the people to obey all these orders. And whether you or I or, uh, you know, some Uber driver or hair stylist thinks a particular government solution is good or not is irrelevant. All the problems that are just beginning to crash down around our society's head, whether it be a bankrupt social security trust fund or, or zombie companies or, or, or our banks or pension funds or our anemic manufacturing infrastructure, or the, the, the paper-thin, just-in-time supply chain that we're all seeing in our grocery stores. You name it, they're all at risk. Now, that's, a, that's an extreme statement, I know, and I'm not trying to be an alarmist. I'm just telling you, this is, this is not abnormal to think of. This is, this is what preppers think of. We think ahead. We think of what could happen. You know, these solutions that, you know, the, the, the government officials will stand up in front of the podium and say, they all sound good, right? Who, who doesn't want to help out our fellow Americans? Who, who doesn't want to provide relief, right? It always sounds great, always, but it ends up bad. In a stagflationary environment, it's going to get crazy. The dollar is going to go down way, way down, like stocks, gold, and even silver is going to go up. This is why I stack, folks. We are stacking gold and silver for, for stagflation, for an absolute collapse of our debt-driven, fiat-based economy. That is why I stack. And maybe, 
Maybe you think this is extremist. Maybe you think I'm nuts. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping well at night. I'm not panicked. But I'm a realist. I know that the pin happened. We witnessed it. And now we're seeing, we're seeing a recession in the works, potentially a depression. But more likely than that, stagflation. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this video. I, I'm pretty opinionated, as you can see. If you disagree with me, please put it in the comments below. All I ask is that while disagreeing, try not to be disagreeable. Okay, we're all here trying to do the best we can. We're all trying to support each other. And, you know, guys, in the end, we're going to be very happy we were stackers. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope your day is a-okay.